Hey everyone, Fusebank coming at ya. In our previous video, we took a look at getting set up with the Unity WebXR exporter and then getting that deployed into a browser that we can start testing with, say, on the Quest, for example. In this video, I want to actually go about leveraging a lot of the existing tooling and interactions that are provided with VRDK, integrating them into WebXR so that you can build out really powerful interactions and VR experiences with some pre-existing tooling that is really easy to integrate. So if you haven't watched our previous video, that will be a prereq to get set up with WebXR so that you'll have a basis and then we can go about integrating VRTK into the WebXR sample scene. And if you do find this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button because it really does help out the channel a ton. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive into Unity. So where we just left off, we had just gotten the sample scene, we'd gone ahead, set up the build settings and then deployed it. Now we can actually take the practical next steps of trying to integrate this with VRTK. So as we saw in our previous video, back when we were exploring VRTK and Tilia, you'll want to go ahead and head over to the Tilia packages here. And then we'll first need to set up our scope registries and then we can go ahead and import in the specific packages we'll need for WebXR. To first get started, we'll actually want to head over to our project settings and then head over to the package manager and then copy in the name, the URL, and the scope. Give that a save. And that should be good to go. The two packages that we're gonna be using are our tracked alias here, which will allow us to basically copy in the movement into from, from WebXR into our BRTK copy that we can then enable for all the interactions that we need. So track to alias will be a pretty big component. The other big component is going to be for the sake of our samples is to just use interactions. So we'll be using the interactables as a prefab that we can go ahead, dump onto our table here and just get situated with. With that said, let's go ahead first copy in the tracked alias all the way up to this and then head to the package manager and then add that from get URL. Once the tracked alias is finished importing, let's go ahead and grab the same thing for our interactables here. And again, add that package from get URL. Okay, great. So once that has imported in, you'll be able to see that within your packages folder here. So that's good to go. First thing we'll need to do is set up our tracked alias. So you can search for that within our packages and there should be a camera rig here. Let's go ahead, drag that out into our scene. And then we'll need to set up an, a linked alias so that we can go ahead and add that as a field within our tracked alias so that the tracked alias knows what to copy. So on our WebXR setting here, let's go ahead and add on a linked alias. Then we have to basically fill in all of the details specific to our linked alias. So st starting with, we can just do the really easy ones. So we have to add our headset in, which is going to be this. Then we'll add in our camera main to the headset camera. Uh, we'll ignore velocity for just a second. And then we need to add in the hands for left and right. We'll also want to go ahead and add in velocity trackers. So for that, there are some built-in tools that I think are worth leveraging here. So what I'll go ahead and do real quick is to uh, set up prefabs that will allow us to go ahead and copy in the velocities. Then we need to go ahead and add on a velocity estimator. There are a few different velocity estimators that are available here. Uh, we'll simply put, we'll just use the average velocity estimator and we just need to provide a source and what it's relative to. So in our case for the head, I just need to go ahead, drag on our camera here, and then we'll be relative to the uh, play space. The rest of this is fairly standard, so we don't have to worry about that. And then let's go ahead and just add that both for the left and right hand, and then put the respective sources. So 
left is going to be the left hand relative to the play space. Right is the right hand relative to the play space. So that's our velocity. And then once we have that set up, we can go ahead and associate that with our linked alias. So head goes to head, uh, left and right. Go ahead and save that. So that sets up our velocity tracker. So that's very convenient for when we're tossing interactables around to be able to actually apply the velocities and not just have them drop from our hands when, when, we're, when we're done with it. And with the linked alias set up, we just now need to simply go ahead and drag that onto our scene here. And we're, we're good to go with uh, our WebXR controller passing data to our tracked alias, which is great. Next thing we'll need to do is set up our interactors. So interactors are what will allow us to be able to define when we want to be able to grab something that is interactable. What I typically just end up using are these prefabs here, which are our interactors, and then you can associate them with the hand. So simply put, I'll just go ahead and find the aliases here, drag one for the left, drag another for the right, and that is more than enough for us to set up our interactors. Now for our interactors, we need to set up a grab action, which we'll take a look at in just a second, as well as the velocity tracker. You can either grab the velocity trackers straight from your WebXR controller, or alternatively, they are provided as part of your uh, alias. So within the interactor, you'll have a velocity tracker that's already built in. So you can go ahead and drag that onto your interactor there. Uh, similarly, there's the interactor, there's our velocity tracker, go ahead and drag that on. Okay, we'll save that. And next we'll want to, let's just use this as a simple test bed where we will want an interactable. So for simplicity's sake, I recommend just taking a look at this prefab here, which is the interactions interactable. And we'll go ahead and drag that into our interactables area. Now this is a kind of big thing as you can see here. So we'll want to reposition this. Kind of approximately like so. And then let's go ahead and set up some actions. So the first is to follow. And then the second uh, will be to swap. This is what will allow us to do some very quick grabs as far as being able to grab it, toss it, swap it between our hands. Uh, kind of just as if you would normally grab something. So that's our interactable setup. We can do the same thing exactly for these other ones here. The, the main things, if we wanted to just kind of quickly set up our interactables, is I would just go ahead and copy this. And under your mesh container, just let's say drag. I Well, for, for real simplicity's sake, I'd copy the component here, apply that to this interactable. So it's paste the component values, and then just drag your sphere into this mesh container, and then we can delete this. Uh, you might have to unpack the prefab, and then remove that cube. So your sphere is good to go. For using the sphere, you could either choose to edit this mouse drag so that it's using the parent rigid body, or I think for simplicity's sake, just remove the mouse drag and then remove the rigid body. The rigid body is already applied here on top of the interactable itself. So you don't want to actually duplicate that rigid body. So that's just how you would quickly update these existing interactions to use VRTK very simply again, without having to code. The one area where we will need to code is specifically to go back to our interactor and then create a Boolean action. To do this, what we'll first need to do is set up our assembly file to align all of the scripts that need references to be together. And unfortunately, the way the WebXR exporter is set up, they have not auto, uh, auto assigned the references. So you'll first want to go to your create, head over to assembly definition, and then give it a name. You can give it whatever name you want. 
And then you'll need to create two fields for the assembly. So the first one is going to be for WebXR. Give that a second to load. That's web for WebXR. And then we'll also want to do the same for VRTK. And this is going to be the Zinnia runtime. Click apply. So that will recompile your scripts to have those correct namespaces. So more specifically, if you don't have any namespace, that, that is what we'll use. Once that's compiled, we'll then want to create our own C Sharp script, which is going to be our Boolean action for when we get a trigger pressed on our controller. Let's just call this web trigger and then open that up. Okay, perfect. So let's first get in WebXR here. And then we'll also want to grab Zinnia, specifically, I think, Zinnia action. Next, we want to inherit from the Boolean action, which will allow us to create that grabbing action off of the triggers. And then we'll need to set up a reference to a WebXR controller. So this is going to be our public reference to the controllers. And then we need to from the controller. So controller get button, we'll have a button type, and then you can choose whatever button you choose to use. I'll just be using triggers here. So that's very standard, very straightforward there. And then we just need to pass this onto our VRTK Boolean action using the receive function. And we'll do this every frame on update. And that's it. Very simple way we actually don't even need these namespaces. We'll just keep it to, to this line. Let that compile for a second, and then that's going to be our Boolean action, and then we'll associate the left and right controllers respectively. So for that, I'll go ahead and assign them here within the camera set. Just create one for our actions, and then create an empty. So this is gonna be left trigger. And this will be the right trigger. Then all we have to do is on both of these game objects, drag on our web trigger. And then we'll need to, for the right, drag the right controller. For the left, drag the left controller. Save that, and then let's just go ahead and assign those back to our interactors. So left controller goes here, right controller will, right controller goes here. With that, we've gone ahead, set up our interactors for VRTK. We've gone ahead, set up an interactable. If you want, you can go through the full setup for any interactable here. I just wanted to walk you through just one example with the sphere. You could do the same thing with the cubes. You can add your own objects, etc., etc. But at that point, you're just kind of handling everything to be VRTK specific. And with that, go ahead, build and run this, set up your HTTPS server for making sure you can test locally. And as you can see on screen here, you should be able to get that up and running and it will apply the velocities across your across everything that you throw. So yeah, that, that's how you can get this working with VRTK. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. In the next set of videos, I'll probably be looking a little bit more closely into Ethereum. And then ultimately what I wanna be able to do is to integrate the web versions of Ethereum with Unity and WebXR and combine that into a VR crypto sample scene, if you will, which I think could be a really interesting proof of concept. So would love to know what you guys think about that down in the comments below. Otherwise, I think that'll do that for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.